Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and welcome back to my beginner's guide to carving series. Now today I want to talk to you about axes. Um, I think most people will associate an axe with most types of wood carving. You don't 100% need one, but they can certainly make the job go easier and quicker, um, especially when you're kind of a little bit practiced and you're taking the safety into consideration. Um, and really what I've got here is just a selection of my carving axes. I just wanted to talk you through a few options um, you know some of them are quite expensive some of them can be picked up quite cheaply um, and you know really it's down to you you know a lot of people will rush out and buy the best tools available to them um, spending quite a lot of money and I've said this in, in other parts of this series about knives and things you know you haven't got to rush out and spend a lot of money especially if you don't know if it's something that you're really gonna like or gonna get on with um, so what I've got here are four of my axes. I will mention a few others in this video as well. Um, so to start off with, and you will have seen this before in other videos, this is my Gransfors Brux Cubbon or mini hatchet, depending on what you uh, where you find it online. It's a very, very small axe. Um, it's very lightweight, it's got a small haft on it, and it's very, very light and easy to use, especially for things like spoon carving and other small carving projects. Um, and this, for a very long time, was my favorite axe. Um, now they're not cheap, and I will go through the cost of each of these later on in the video. Um, these are not cheap. Um, Gransfors Brux is not a cheap brand. Um, I like them because I find them particularly good for carving. Um, they were what I almost started out with, uh, maybe not my first axe, but I progressed onto these pretty quickly because I got very into carving. Um, and I really like this axe. And this, is, this one is a perfect example of what I class as a dual purpose axe. So if you're watching this video series because you want to get into carving and that's really all you're interested in, you can kind of ignore this, though it is a good option. Um, but if you are a bushcrafter or you want to become a bushcrafter, you're getting into the two side by side, this is a really, really good option. Um, these axes, you can stick it in a pack, you can even fit this in a pocket, and I often put this in my jacket if I'm going out for an afternoon and I don't want to take a big bag with me. Um, and really, so I'm just looking around for my mask. Um, so really, this is a really good multi-purpose option. Um, Grants Force do these in a number of sizes, so you can get the, uh, what's the next one, the Wildlife Hatchet, which is about yay long and then you've got the small forest axe which is about yay long um, and so on and so forth so really you can suit it for your own purposes i for carving i really like a short handle or a shorter handle um, i just find the longer ones tend to get in the way a little bit um, so the cubbon or the mini hatchet is a really good option um, next up, and I'll, I'll do this one next actually, this is my other Grand Spores Axe, I mean, or the, the other one that I'm showing you today. This is their Swedish Carving Axe, I think it's the large one. Um, it's got what's known as an asymmetrical grind, so you can hopefully see from the profile here that this edge has got a bevel on it and this edge is flat. Um, so this is what's known as a right-handed bias because I'm right-handed. So I will generally, where's a piece of off-cut, there we go. So generally, I will be using the flat face of this axe to cut into my wood. If I tried doing it the other way round, it just doesn't work very well. The axe tries to skip off. Um, these, you know, this is what I class as a dedicated carving axe. This is designed exclusively just for carving. Um, and again, you, you, you pay for that. Um, and these, these, as I say, are not cheap, but you know it's really, really good for carving. This is by far my most used carving axe, alongside this one. But this is this is a little bit of a newer purchase for me, so I'll come on to this in a moment. Um, but this is probably my favourite carving axe. It's got quite a heavy head on it. You know, you can allow the head to do the work. You don't have to put loads of arm strength into it. You can almost just let the head fall and do the work for you. Um, so if I'm doing a lot of carving or if I'm carving something quite big, like maybe a serving bowl, this is my go-to axe. Um, it's not quite as portable because it is a little bit bigger, but I tend to only use this in my workshop. I wouldn't take this bushcrafting with me um, for two reasons. One is it's not really suited for it. You could get away with chopping wood with it, um, but you know why would you spend all that money and then use it for something that could potentially damage it? Because it does have quite a fine edge on the blade, um, and also you know it, it's quite hefty. So you know this for me is a workshop tool, um, and it is by far my favourite axe. 
but you know if you're just getting into carving and you're not sure if you're going to carry on with it or if it's going to be for you I wouldn't recommend running out and waste or maybe not wasting but spending that this much money they do have a good resale value on them um, but you won't get what you paid for it if it's second hand um, so these are probably you know two of my favorite carving axes the next one I'm going to show you this is the Hans Carlson Sloyd Axe. You may have seen just before Christmas, I did a video about this. It's fairly new to me, but it's a lovely little carving axe. And again, it falls into that category of dedicated carving axe. It's got a symmetrical grind, so you have a, a, a mirrored bevel on, or mirroring bevel on both sides. I'll show you down the cross section there. You can kind of see, hopefully, you know, the two sides of the blade match each other. Um, now again, a bit like the Coven, this is a lightweight axe. It's got a slightly longer haft on it, but you know, this is a lightweight axe. I can sit there for a good few hours using this without my arm getting too tired. Um, and you know, it's a really, really nice little axe. Um, again, more on the expensive side, probably the most expensive of the four here. Um, but you know, it's really, really nice. If, you, if you've got into carving and you're finding you really, really like it and you want to spend a bit of money, you want to upgrade your gear, this is probably what I would recommend alongside this. And really, the difference between these two axes, I mean, the price point's not too far from each other, um, and it's whether you want a heavier head that you can allow to do a bit more heavy work, or you want a lighter head. I mean, this is ideal for spoon carving, in my opinion. Um, it's really, really good. Um, it's heavy enough that you can let the, the axe do the work with things like um, the stems on spoons and the backs of the bowls and things like that. Um, but it's light enough that you can use it for a fairly long time. Um, how are we doing for time? I don't want this video to be too long. This series is really meant to be a quick kind of bang, bang, bang. You know, these, these are my tips. This is my advice with the benefit of hindsight and having done this for a while. Um, so lastly, and this is kind of a bit of an odd, odd example here. Um, this is a tomahawk. Um, it's actually a cold steel trail hawk. Um, you can pick these up really cheaply. Um, you need to do a bit of work to them. What I should say is all these axes I've shown you so far come shaving sharp out of the box. Um, you know, you don't need to do anything to them apart from keep them sharp while you're using them. This um, quality control with cold steel, and I own a lot of cold steel products, um, most of their knives are superb. Their axes I find really hit and miss. I think it depends where they've been made, what part of the world. Quality control's not brilliant on them. But the benefit of this, and this is another sort of, you know, combination axe. I mean, I use this for bushcraft as well as in my workshop. Um, and this head, although I've actually sort of secured this on pretty well, it will come off. Um, and what you can do is you can kind of turn it upside or put it up this way, tap it down on a solid surface, and you can take this head off. Um, the benefit of that is twofold. It means that you can have the, the, the half in your pack taking up very little space and you can have this separate so that you can you know, just flit it into little slots in your pack easier. Um, you know, this is pretty sharp. I can carve with this. It doesn't carve as well as these, but it's certainly doable. Um, and you know, this is something that I can use for bushcraft. I've got no qualms about using this to split wood or chop down branches and that kind of thing. Um, and it works really, really well. Um, so those are the options I, I was going to show you today. And I, as I said, I'll give you a quick idea on price point. So starting with the most expensive, you've got the Hans Carlson Sloyd Axe. You can pick these up when they're available because they're not often in stock in the UK. These are going to cost you about £150, which is a lot of money for, unless it's something you know you're really into. I bought this about, I don't know, six months ago. I'm really pleased that I did. But, you know, if I'd gone out and bought this when I first started carving and then found out that it wasn't for me, um, that would have been a huge waste of money. Next most expensive is the um, Grantsfors Swedish Carving Axe. This is about 130-ish pounds, depending where you go. I mean, you can shop around for these things, but roughly you're talking about 130 pounds. Um, if you're really into your carving, it's certainly money well spent. But you know, don't rush out and buy this straight away. You don't need it. Um, next one, Grantsfors Coven. I've seen these online recently, about the 90 pounds mark. Um, you can get the slightly longer half in one slightly cheaper, believe it or not, because the, the, the short handle is slightly more specialist, but you're talking about you know, 80 to 90 pounds for a decent Grandsfors, either a wildlife hatchet or one of these covens. Um, and then 
As an example of something on the cheaper side, you can get the Cold Steel Trailhawk. I think I've seen these for about 30, 35 pounds. Um, and the, the difference in price really does reflect the difference in quality. You have to spend a bit of time with the stone, sharpening up and then honing this blade. And once you do, they're brilliant. They work really, really well. I actually sat out here in my workshop yesterday um, and I was doing a little bit of carving with this because I didn't bring any of my other axes out. And I then went on to use this to split down all of my waste wood into firewood, which just goes into a bag in the back of my workshop. Um, but you know, it goes really, really well. So these are pretty good. Um, just another quick thing, I've noticed we just hit the 10 minute mark and I want to wrap this up pretty quickly. Um, there are other options out on the market. Um, Mora, who you've heard me talk about a lot, do, uh, a, what, is, what is it called, it's the Mora Campax. Um, I've used one once, um, I haven't bought one yet, but I, I do plan on getting one just to have one. Um, they're about 35, 40 pound, they've got a good, um, good edge on them, um, good edge for carving from what I can tell, though I haven't used it a lot. Um, the other alternatives, you can go out to things like car boot sales or you can go on to certain popular online auction websites um, and you can buy old vintage axes. Um, things like um, Ewell and um, I can't think of any other names off the top of my head, but things like Kemp pattern axes, really, really good. You can pick them up five, ten pounds, spend a bit of time with a file and some sharpening stones, um, and they're really good for learning how to sharpen axes um, and how to care for axes. So you can you can spend very little money, and if you ruin it, so be it. Um, most, you know, it's very difficult to ruin an axe unless you're being really silly with it. Um, but you know, you can use a file and a stone to get them back to proper sharpness, maybe even rehandle them yourself. Um, and it's a nice little project to get you going. Um, what other options are there? Um, one thing I would try and veer away from is, is DIY shop axes, things that are designed to sit in a back garden and use for sort of you know, little hatchets used for splitting wood. I don't think they're ideal. You can tailor them, you know, you can go, go at them with a file and some stones and alter them yourself. Um, it is a nice little project. I just don't find the quality of those kind of axes and the steel in the head is very good. Um, it's very hit and miss, but if that's your only option, you can go into a, a DIY shop and you can pick one up for five, 10 pounds, do a bit of work to it yourself, um, and you'll have some, certainly something you can carve with. It may not be as good as these here, but it will certainly get you going. Um, so that's it for axes, guys. Um, rambled on a little bit longer than I intended, but you know, just as an idea on price point and the sort of the quality you can get. Um, obviously, I tend to have, you know, at least nowadays, a lot more expensive axes because that's what I've progressed to. But you don't have to start out there. You know, you can pick up some pretty cheap and inexpensive stuff, either that's good to go out the box or with a little bit of work from your side. Um, and they're good to go. So I hope it was useful, guys. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers, guys.